Which five teams are going to make the biggest jump this coming NFL season in 2024? We're also going to look at a couple of pro football focus trade ideas. Some things that might shake some things up this offseason from some NFL teams. We'll read and react to that. How about the EA Sports college football video game? A lot of people were very excited. Chase is obviously very excited. He's a big college football fan. Joseph behind the scene is also very excited for that. This is something I never played, but we're going to talk about who should be on the cover. And with that, welcome to Chat It Up here on the Chat It Up Sports Network. I'm your humble host, Greg Larner. To my immediate left is a man that they called Treen because he forgot how to say his name to a very, very pretty girl at one mm -hmm. point. Uh, he is CG. He is the founding member of the Thick Boy Running Club. Chase, what's going on? Well, speaking of, we're back in the Thick Boy Running Club. Hannah decided to... Uh motivate me to sign up for the stump jump. So I have to run a 10 mile trail run in less than three weeks. Do you think that she was three telling, weeks? You, telling you something? Uh, yeah, hundred percent because we were talking about her Fatty. baking. Yeah. Her baking <laughs> here recently. So who would have thunk? I was yeah. like, Oh, she's like, I like it better when you run. So I was like, Oh, I wonder why. <laughs> and what's, so, what's that called again? The, the run, the stump jump, the stump jump. It's a famous run here in Chattanooga. Oh, that's exciting. People well, travel far for it. Oh yeah. yeah. I like it. 10 miles. 10 miles, big dog. That's about. I haven't ran since October. And we've we've knocked out a couple runs in the last two days. Well, four days, I guess. So, yeah. All okay. right. Well, we're going to talk about that. So, his immediate left, a man that they call GT, a man who once allegedly or not dated and or dated adjacent Alex Morgan, also is incredible friends. What, what do you mean? You, you didn't. Uh, we, you ju she jumped on your back one time and you guys, you felt the connection real quick and you thought that maybe there was some, so, some sort of spark there, right? Uh, hi, I'm Garrett. It's, uh, it's great to be Garrett here. Uh, <laughs> we, so my, my cousin at his wedding, Alex Morgan, was a bridesmaid. I was a groomsman and we were teamed up to walk up yeah, and down and you the felt aisle. a nice spark. So I guess in, in theory, there's only uh, one other person who's ever walked her... Um, back up the aisle other than her current husband. <laughs> so that is, uh, that is something I can, boy. I can claim to fame there. Yeah. But there was a little spark. You felt a little spark. I, I promise you it was not from her end. So <laughs> <laughs> the spark was all on your end. My yeah, friend. One way street, big dog. Yeah. And at the end of the table is a man who looks like he should be in some sort of action movie. Talk to him. So dramatic right now with the shades. Gotta have it. I'm shining. He's always got the same colored sweatsuit on. Monochromatic. That's like your theme. Yeah. You got to stay with the thing. Comfy swag. Hi. A.K.A. Mr. Malcolm Harris. What's happening, people? Welcome to Chat It Up. It's good to be here. It's good to have you here. It's good yeah. to see you, boys. You have your sunglasses on. Come on, man. So how can you... I mean, I'm, I can't hardly see you, but... You Future is right. I'm like John Cena. You can't <laughs> Hater see shades. <laughs> Hater shades. Blocking out all of the hate. All right, so let's get into it, boys. Uh, I, I do want to... Before we get into any of these topics that we talked about, I, I do want to kind of ask Chase about what's going on with the running venture and how that's all going. How do you start one of these stump jump? It's 10 miles. So what, what's the training process look like for you early on? Well, as we have three weeks, we're going to go a very strong route. Everything I do workout wise is going to have like a heavy cardio piece, a lot of legs, but a lot of like step ups, yeah. lunges, calf raises. But then you also got to dial it back. So it's got to be like your cardio is going to be on a bike some. And then three days a week, we're going to do longer runs. Well, not longer runs. Like we'll go medium, maybe a maybe a speed run-ish type thing. And then like on the weekends, we go for a long run. What does like, our speed run look like? What does our long distance run look like? What, well, are, the, what are the distances they'll, on? They'll vary. Um, so like I'll, I'll gradually build up in a, a, a fast gradual, if you will. Yeah, so three we, weeks away. Yeah, fast gradual. So like a speed run for me. Um, it, it's a lot of time-based stuff. So like run hard for a minute and 30 walk for 30 seconds. Cause we, I need to keep that, keep that heart rate it's up. It's kind of like what Rocco does. Yeah. It's a sniff and sprint. Yes. Yeah, he, he went with me yesterday on a trail run, trail dog. Oh, shout out to the good boy. Um, we went up to the signal yesterday. He ran around, no tree <laughs> left unpeed on. <laughs> Interesting. And then he just sprints after us. And then we'll run at a very slow pace, and then he'll sniff for a while. He'll pee, and then he'll run after us. So just a hundred sniffing sprints. 
Did you name him Rocco or did he come? He what? came that way. It's an Italian name. Yeah. Um, he probably definitely came from Rocco's Modern Life, but I don't like that. <laughs> you didn't like Rocco's Modern Life? No, I didn't really love that show. So I'm going to go against that. And the patron saint of dogs is St. Rocco. Hey, so that's oh, what I'm going to go. I heard somebody say that. There was another fly. dog at the fancy dog love park. That. And I was like, that sounds sophisticated. I would never come up with that. Love it. <laughs> so trail running, stump jump. It's There's a ton of people in this thing. And they have a 50K or a 10 miler. And these are some treacherous hills. This is a true up and down signal mountain, up suck Creek, bunch of animals doing miserable. the 50 K. Um, but me and my boy Baker heading out on the miserable. trails. Sounds yeah. miserable. What's the, what's the longest any of y'all have run? Um, like in a, whether it was by yourself or in a 5k, 10k, like in some sort of a race. I think the long, so I did a 10k in Reykjavik, Iceland. 10K in Reykjavik, Iceland. That was nice. uh, probably the longest wow. I've ever run. Other than that, the only thing I've signed up for is my 401K. And that was... <laughs> that was that's, a, that's quite the long race. That's, you're in it for the long That's, that's a lifelong race yeah, there. Yeah. But yeah, 10K in Iceland, man. That was I didn't prep for that other than just like trekking around Iceland for the week before. So that was fun. Just off the cuff. Did, what, did you know you were doing this run or you just decided when you were there? Uh, we knew we signed up for it before we hit the trip. So okay. it was a part of, uh, we had, and we scheduled it out. It's like, Hey, why don't we start with this and we'll do ice climbing and then we'll do hiking and then we'll camp by all the waterfalls. And, and then let's just end it by running <laughs> well, a 10 K and I'm in Reykjavik and then just eat and drink till we yeah, can't do you, it anymore did it with you bliss. It was, um, it was my boys back in Dallas. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Boys back in Dallas. So it was a good time. That was fun. And I've never done anything like that again. Like my big shtick was that I used to go on the trail and try to find all the free like running t-shirts and like load up my closet <laughs> with them <laughs> of all the races I didn't run. <laughs> so I had like five t-shirts that are like 10 K's and five K's that are different races. I've never run, nice. <laughs> but it looks like you did, but it looks like it's all exception nice. is reality. Fake it. So you make it Malcolm. I mean, the only thing I run is my mouth and game, bro. <laughs> you know? Nah, um, I actually signed up for a 5K one time, Peace Tree Road Race. Okay. And uh, I lied and said my hamstring was hurting, so I didn't have to go. <laughs> Faked an injury. Yeah, man. Classic. Uh, I, I just, I'm sorry. That's just not my activity. Every every friend has a role, like a like a team. Like, I'm the eating friend. And, you know, the, the go out friend. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm gonna, gonna I'm, yeah like I'm going to uplift you at Parkway. Shout out to Parkway. Creep plug. Um, but yeah, I'm not the running friend. So how's the workouts been going? You've been sticking. Uh, no, the gym? bro. No, I, I haven't worked out in like three weeks. Oh. You need to get back. I know. Oh, I know. I just uh, life, bro. Dude, it's okay. All right. Okay. You know, but I, I, I got to get Your back. going to get better. It is. And I, I feel great. Like. I went on a walk um, and I went on a bike ride like a week ago. It was great. I, I wasn't sweating like that. Did I you just, use my bike that's still sitting at my old apartment? I did not. <laughs> I rented a bike. Nice. It was fun. It was a good time. But I, I will get back in there. You know, that summer body, you know, I'm close. I could just see Miggy on a bike with like Louis Armstrong in the back row. And mm -hmm. Like, I see trees of green. He's just smiling, <laughs> looking all over the place. He's just a like, nice, easy yeah, bike. Yeah. 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 He's got his like button down flower shirt on. Yes. <laughs> just going. <laughs> Maybe there's a little basket in the front. <laughs> you don't imagine me with a basket in the front. With a little dog in the front. Yeah, little, oh, yeah little, definitely little, could. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He'd have a gold chain. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just to provide some flavor. What's Bro. the, is like a little mini pug? Yeah. That's what Kyle wanted to envision. 100%. Yeah. He's got to be, he's got to be small at the tub. Yeah. Iced out chain. Yeah, iced on, out. On, on the Miggy pug. On man. the Mi I Miggy pug. That. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> My longest was, uh, was a 5K. That's what I did in college. We had to do it a couple of times for baseball. It's been about it. I did a Spartan sprint one time. Good, How long that? bad? It was cool. I did. It was at City Field for the Mets oh. play. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's the reason I did it. It's oh, just like one mile, and it's like an obstacle course where there's just like a bunch of different obstacles and things like that, and uh, activities at each different sort of station. And if you don't pass it, you've got to do like twenty burpees. Not bad. No, I did it in under an hour. I was very happy. That's what I wanted. So that's when I was. That was back like prime, fresh out of college. G. You could do anything you wanted back then. Unbroken back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Superman. Now we ain't running. We're walking. We're strictly walking now. 
There's right. no more running. Unless we're playing kickball or something, straight lines, short sprints. There's no long distance running. I would like anymore. to play kickball with you guys. I miss the kickball. I think you'd love it. I would. Mm-hmm. Why didn't you play before? That. I just was so busy and I couldn't commit to like being somewhere every Thursday, but now I'm not as busy. Obviously, you make time for what you want to make time for. So, like half of his hey, like co workers were like on yeah, it was deep, bro. It was deep. Pause. Um, yeah, so <laughs> uh, let's talk a little NFL here. And then we got some again, we're going to talk about some different things. We got NFL, we're going to talk trades, we're going to talk college football, might even talk a little Vols basketball, a little SEC hey. basketball as well, because we are getting dangerously close to the end of the college basketball season. March Madness is right around the corner. If you're not familiar, we're already in the middle of February, so pretty wild. But let's go to the first topic, and it's, it's which five teams in the NFL, in your estimation, will take the biggest jump in 2024? If you want, we can snake draft this thing and go around the room and each give what we think. And we don't have to go in any particular order in terms of like, hey, I think this team is the number one or for number five. Let's just throw them out there and we'll talk about it. Lead us off. Okay, I will go first. Uh, let's see. When, when it comes to teams that I think are going to take the biggest jump, I mean, do we even have to talk about it? The Green Bay Packers. I, I feel like I talk about them all of the time. You know, they're a team that went, in, what, nine and eight and stuck into the playoffs as a seven seed. First mm-hmm. time anybody has ever won a, a playoff game as a seven seed. I know it's only been around for like three years. That's fine. It is what it is. Um, but yeah, the Packers, youngest roster in the league poised to have a, a big breakout season. So I'm excited about them. Young quarterback, obviously, a lot of young weapons. So to me, they're poised to really take that next step and be the team on, on the top of the NFC North to compete with the Lions. Lions are probably going to keep Jared Goff, I would assume. You have to pay him. Hennon Hooker is there. I don't think he's going to get that shot next year no. coming back from the injury. But they've got a really solid young team, obviously coming off an NFC championship berth for the first time since the early 90s. So... The Packers are going to ascend. They're going to be a team that wins double-digit games. They figured it out now. They have their quarterback. They they have what they need there. So to me, the Green Bay Packers would be a team that would be high on my list. Obviously, to uh, to take a big jump in 2024. What was their record? Last Nine year? and eight. Nine and eight. Yeah. So they had to win at least double digits and win two playoff games to outshine this past record. Yeah. Uh, get to the NFC Championship game. No, I'd it. say like you know compete really compete for the division in terms of with the with the Lions win 11, 12 games and go out there and, you know, com- like you said, Garrett, get to an NFC Championship game, win a couple of playoff games. Yep. If not get to the Super Bowl. Um, as much as I really want to say the Titans, <clears throat> I just don't know uh, because our offensive line is terrible. All right, so we're going to go. Is it our, are we getting our homer ones out of the way first? No, I'm not going to go. I'm not, I'm not going Titans. <laughs> I want to. I really do. Man, I don't know why I'm thinking this, but I actually think the Arizona Cardinals will. Oh, whoa. Is that yeah. what you were thinking? Yes. Oh, you, oh nice. We're on the same believe nice. wavelength. Bro, hey. great pick. Yeah. Shout out to the Wavelength Studios, by the way. They just for hosting they that. had a little bit of something last year. Yeah. And I think Caller's got a lot to prove. Their coaching just got dramatically better. And if you're you're a few little pieces away from being better than the Seahawks, he can beat the Rams because, well, I mean, you got a full healthy Stafford year. How often is that going to happen? It's not going to happen much. You know? That's the team you believe in. That's going to compete. For the next three years. For the next three years. I think the Cardinals make a big jump. That's because they were really bad. But I think they could sniff the 9-8 and crowd if they wanted to. Obviously, circumstances have to come in. But I think their coaching just got a lot better, and they're going to get a few pieces if you can convince people in free agency to, I don't know, come to Arizona, that'd be nice. Yeah. I mean, it's not hard to convince people to go to Arizona. That's mm. what I figured. Yeah, it's nice out there. I don't believe in the Cardinals. As, I mean, as I, long that, as that, Kyler Murray is your quarterback, I don't believe in the Cardinals. Especially when the, the NCAA football game drops. Yeah, we won't see any part of him. <laughs> he loves to play his video game. You remember when they almost put that in his contract and he got super offended? So he's like, whoa, no, that's not going in the contract because it became public knowledge and everybody, you know, really got on him and the Cardinals for that. Yeah. I mean, he was competing with Johnny Menzel for uh, most uh, hours watched of game film. So <laughs> least amount of- which was zero. By the <laughs> zero. Yeah. Was just- <laughs> Look, they have some decent pieces, you know, like Hollywood Brown is there. Obviously Greg Dorch, Zach Pascal, uh, Michael Wilson is a good young player. Rondell Moore, who we were talking about earlier from Purdue, right? Joseph Purdue. And, Trey, uh, Trey McBride was 
Trim Brian, absolute oh. stud in the season. Yeah, he is so he cold. Was. He is very cold. I, I really like him a lot. They have some young pieces. Obviously, they drafted Paris Johnson out of uh, Ohio State last year. The defense out of side of Buda Baker. There's a lot to be desired, left to be desired there uh, on the defensive side of the football. So I, I get what you're saying. I think there could be some upside, especially in that division, to take a leap. Again, if we're talking about just taking a leap, they don't mm -hmm. have to be great or anything like that. Nope. Yeah, just be better than they were this year and, and be better than the you know the Rams and the Seahawks potentially. That's it. I don't believe in it, but you can see it. I can see where you're coming from. Yeah. I don't agree with you, but I see where you're coming from. So, I mean, I got two ones left. No, just go one. Okay. Well, you'll get a snake. will come back to snake you. Come back. All yeah. right. So, let me just get the home one out of the way. Okay. Give, me, give me Washington. Nice. I, I do think, well, I mean, when you talk about biggest leaps, I mean, we're talking about the bottom of a division winning four games. I mean, give me five. Like, I mean, that, I'm already better. So, but they just <laughs> cleaned shop out of that entire coaching staff. They have a brand new ownership. Shout out to the new ownership. Every like, there, Washington has not been more excited about a season coming up from a hype perspective than the one coming up. And that's because we're post Dan Snyder era. We got the new ownership with their decisions coming in. So if we can just draft our quarterback of the future, fingers crossed, it's Caleb Williams, then I, I think that, you know, they could go up, win, and compete with the, uh, the uh, NFC East big time. So I'm picking two since I'm sitting in the back. Whoa, nobody's going to say anything about his because Washington Commanders blasphemy? Because I because I'm blaspheming? Oh, because I'm right. Well, we let you get off your point about Green Bay, and none of us. You can you, uh, push back. Bro, you're wrong, bro. Th that's fine. Green Bay is not going to be good. It's already passed. The time is already passed. No, I, I, I rock with his pick. I mean, the time the, is already passed. The Commanders are exponentially going to be better than what they were this year. You think so? Yes. How many sure. wins better? At least four. Why? And that's double. That's double. That's a bigger. I mean, you're talking about going from nine for the Packers to at least ten. That's one game. You said Not ten. You said why? Yeah, why? why because the there's a certain person no longer in the building anymore. Ron Rivera. His cheeks. Jeez, that, what about Dan Quinn? He can win you football games. He's Danny? not good. Yeah, for sure. And Dan Quinn knows where he sits on that on that. Uh, he came out and said, like Cliff Kingsbury, he's running that offense. Yeah, he's not yeah. touching offense. He like, better not trust that offense. And and I mean, even if he wants to put his hands on the defense, they're going to be exponentially better. How That's good? Was, how good was that Dallas defense, bro? They were amazing because they played trash teams. You face a real offense, you give up forty plus. I, I just think that was a freak. It was a freak day at the mm -hmm. office. That's mm -hmm. what that was. Mm -hmm. But they got all what you though. want. They got got. I don't think they, I think Dan Campbell or Dan Quinn is vastly overrated. Do you feel that way if it's Jaden Daniels, not Caleb Williams? I don't know. <laughs> or Drake May. I'll even say Drake May or Jaden Daniels. If That's it was Drake point. May, I wouldn't even. I mean, Sam Howell will still start in my mind. So, you're yeah, basically the same player. I mean, and from the same college. That's right. You That's know, what I'm saying. Like a white quarterback. So from how how often are we going to go? Way, way better. <laughs> yeah. But I Drake's, mean, Drake's way better. It, it doesn't matter. We're at like the number Jaden Daniels or Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams, Williams is more primed to, you know, come out and have more like a CJ Stroud type of year. Yeah. Jaden Daniels is going to have more of a, uh, give me somebody. I mean, uh, RG3, his rookie year. <laughs> Which would be fantastic as yeah. long as they keep his knees okay. That's like if you're gonna look at the the hopeful potential, that's what Jaden Daniels. Would but be. both of those options put me in a position to say that they're gonna have a massive jump yet next year. And yeah. we're gonna hey, this is recorded. We're gonna come back here in 365 days and say what's up, G. You can say what's up all you want, but the fact of the matter is. You still have to fix that defense, which was cheeks last year. Defense is gonna be nice. You just traded away two big pieces in Sweat and and Chase Young. Then that was for the better. We had way too many. You literally had Our, the worst total we, defense last year. So I'm not. You can be as good as you want on offense. You can draft Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels, and that's fine. But look at the Carolina Panthers. They had a good defense, and their offense was awful. But that's what I'm saying, dude. Is that we had no hope, passion. I mean, the one thing you can't have in a championship team is a team that doesn't believe they can do it. That has completely changed the mentality of our organization. And so that's okay. that's my excelling point on them right now. Okay. We're but we're believing in a wish and a hope and a dream. I got it. <laughs> it's my turn, huh? <laughs> is it his turn yet? <laughs> I'm I just like to push back. We're uh, this is what we're here. We're 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 chatting it up. up for uh debate right now. We're chatting it up. Yeah. Um I thought about this one because he took mine. It was great. Sorry. I'm going to New York. The New York Jets. 
are going to be exponentially better than what they were this year. What was their record? Is their their is, record was. Did somebody tell me, and I'm gonna tell you why. Seven and ten. Seven and ten. Ooh, they won seven games. They did without Aaron Rodgers. That's crazy. Look at that division: New England, Buffalo, Miami. They're gonna sweep New England, and they're gonna split the other two, and then they're gonna make four to six more wins. Aaron Rodgers is going to get some help. I think Devontae Adams is on the way. I really we will, do. We will talk about that. That well, That's a little foreshadowing, folks, because we're going to come back to that. Therefore, give me the New York Jets. And I will have absolutely nothing to say about that because they're on my list. Yeah. And you I want could me to, not agree with more you more. You want me to send this back with another team? Uh, sure, we can snake it back. Does, um, does anybody have any problems with the Jets? Anybody have push back? Chase's face looked a little mm, yeah on the Jets. Uh, no, because I think it's a it's like the best pet possible pick because you just you're adding Aaron Rodgers <laughs> compared to Zach Wilson yeah. or any other Joe Schmo out there. Yeah, Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson, possibly Devonte. No, it's a great pick. Yeah. I didn't want to pick it because I was like, yeah, oh, you know, we're adding, Jets, Jets, we're adding Jets. Aaron. <sighs> He's just a dog, and I know he's got a chip, on, you know, on his shoulder. Like he does. That defense is that defense. Yeah, they kept them single handedly in almost yeah. every game. So, is there any any part of you that has any hesita- Any of you guys has any hesitation about Nathaniel Hackett coming back as the offensive coordinator? I don't. I, I think the plays were there. They just weren't executing because a signal caller wasn't there. They just okay. did not have a quarterback. I just, yeah, I worry about his Achilles, though. I mean, I know he don't need to move around too much with the way he plays. He could have played mean, last year. I know, but that, no reason to push that. Well, they do need to make a contingency plan in this draft. Like, hey, Aaron, like the team's yours, but we're drafting a quarterback, and yeah. I need you to know that. Yeah, I don't think you can bank on Aaron Rodgers for more than maybe two years. Yeah, if that. I think this is the final. This is the last dance. Yeah. And we'll see if he goes out with it. I legit think Aaron... And the Achilles is not going to be an issue. I think Aaron's going to be an example of the Achilles injury recovery. Him, somewhat KD, but Kobe. Aaron, Kobe. Aaron, yeah, I mean Kobe coming back, but Aaron is going to turn this thing around because he probably could have played. Like if they were in really in contention, yeah, he could have played. And like the way they did the surgery, the new reattachments you can do. And he's going to, you know, he's the type of guy like some of it, I know is a little woo woo, but for sure, stem cells, all this stuff that he's done, like it's going to be a new process where he's, everybody's be like, oh, what did you do? What'd you do? And it's going to look the same, maybe even better because he's like also transformed his body in a lot of different ways. And I'm like, oh, he's in shape now. That he is. He's in real good shape. He's not little. You he's know, hungry too. He's not scubby Aaron, you know, skinny chubby. Aaron anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, send us back with another one. Yeah, man. We'll go around the table once. Uh, Chargers. We each give two. Chargers. I just, I, I think that they don't have any way to go but up. What did Joseph do? Joseph's p- fist pumping in the background. It's like, hey, that's on his list. Yeah. The Chargers, I mean, Justin Herbert was playing with nothing. I think they're going to retool that that entire team this, this offseason with some key trades. And uh, yeah, you give me Justin Herbert to make some magic and, and give Casey a scare. That's it. Just well, I mean, they didn't even have him under center. It was Microman, Easton Stick. Yeah. They were terrible. They were yeah. an awful football team. They, what is it, 63 points they gave up to the Raiders? Oh, yeah, that one game was terrible. Like, yeah. dude, that was his first start. He was, oh, no. it was, it was awful. just a bloodbath. So, yeah, awful. they, they got to get better. So, give me the Jets and the Chargers. The Chargers, they finished what, five and 12 yeah. this year. Harbaugh's coming in, new culture. You're talking about the culture in Washington, uh, the culture there in Los Angeles. Hopefully, for their sake, is going to change in their fan base as well because for sure they've had. We talked about last last time. It's so much, so much freaking talent there in Los Angeles. When the Chargers, they just got to put it all together, and that that was the team that was on my list as well. Nice, my brother. Yeah, we're on the same page. We're in the same wavelength today. <laughs> Shout out to wavelength. Shout studio, out the man. studio. Yeah. Um, great name, by the way. Bengals, man. So much plug. Ooh, Cincinnati. Talk to him, GT. I mean, Burrow coming back. That's going to be the whole key to it. But. Easy. Uh, We'll see if T. H- T. Higgins stays around. I don't know if he will, but I don't think you necessarily need him to have uh, to bounce back from the year they had. So give me the Bengals. I think that when Burrow gets back and healthy, it's going to be uh, back to, I mean, yeah, back to Shiesty, man. I retweeted this on Twitter. And can y'all just give me true or false how you feel about the statement? If Joe Burrow has one more season ending injury, he is just Sam Bradford with better receivers. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah. True, true or true. false? I, mean, I, I can see true. that. <laughs> Isn't that accurate? I mean, yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, Heisman Trophy winner. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like a light version of Andrew Luck. We talked about that's, Andrew that's Luck more, last that's, time. That's, that's kind of who I was thinking of. Yeah. Well, well, the thing that Andrew Luck, though, I mean, like he left on his own accord. You know, he. Nah, well, he did leave on his own accord, but like. I mean, Joe could do that eventually as well. He left because he had so many injuries, did Andrew? Yeah, concussions. Yeah. Yeah. That was, I mean, concussions is different than, uh, I mean, you know, Joe could legs. get concussions. Yeah. I mean, Joe, sure. Line? Sure. Yeah. Bad. That's a, that's a reason Andrew Luck left was they just would not help him up front sometimes. And then, of course, like, I think the next year they wound up being the highest rated offensive line. You're like, take him here. Yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. They finally got. The, Finally got him. Now, let's talk about the Bengals for a second because the Bengals were on my list. I like that pick, GT. Um, when it comes to the Bengals, a couple of things that I'm scared about. You mentioned T. Higgins. I also want to talk about Tyler Boyd. It's not going to be. He's an unrestricted free agent. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. As well. Trenton Irwin, whatever with him. So you've got Jamar Chase. Yeah, Mixon. <laughs> Mixon's old as dirt in terms of running back years. I do like Chase Brown a lot. Looked good. Looked yeah. very good. Yeah. Like Chase Brown, that could be sort of a, a changing of the guard there in terms of the running back position. But in terms of pass catchers, Drew Samples, your tight end, Tanner Hudson, Irv Smith is still trying to find his way somewhere in the NFL. I thought he was going to be so good. Right? <laughs> exactly. I cannot be a scout. <laughs> no, I don't I'm know. I'm putting Josh yeah. Rosen and Irv Smith. <laughs> I mean, we are all we all have our misses, Meg. Yeah. We all have our misses. It's fine. It happens to the best of us, though. Mm -hmm. I can't even tell with those sunglasses if you ever look. Who are you looking at? I'm just looking, looking at, at me. I'm looking, looking at, at the them. world, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what scares me about the Bengals a little bit is that like, okay, two out of the three of their wide receivers are unrestricted free agents. How is that going to affect their offense when Joe comes back? If he does, you know, in terms of him coming back, what kind of weapons are they able to put around him? They need to build up the offensive line. A couple of unrestricted free agents that are out there, Mike Evans. Man's thirty. He'll be thirty-one at the beginning of the season. But Mike Evans is still like awesome. Like, yeah, awesome. Exactly. I mean, you put him and Jamar Chase together. Yeah, I don't think he's awesome. I think he's he had a great like, he had a great like season ten last straight year. Thousand, thousand yard, yard seasons. seasons? I, yes. I, I want Mike Evans to be like a Hall of Famer. I want him to be one of the best of all time, and he just disappoints me at least once a game. He does amazing things. So but, does Julio Jones. Whoa, Julio whoa. Jones couldn't score touchdowns. Greatest. He's the greatest top five ever to be a receiver. It's I not mean, a, I, not true. I disappoint myself once a day. I mean, and I still have great days. Yeah, so I and, just, and that's a know. great <laughs> analogy. I just, Mike Evans has just done, just, he drops the ball a lot. And we don't talk about it nearly enough. He's so consistent. He but does. Bro, he, he does. drops the ball quite a bit, mm -hmm. if we're just being honest. But, but, he's he's be be all wide but he'd be a wide receiver, too, on the Bengals. Yeah. So he wouldn't have that much attention. So it would be all Jamar Chase okay. out there. So I, 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 mean, I see. I see, see the vision. Role. Yeah, I see the vision. If he's a two, yeah. That's a dog. He's adding what we're saying. There's no division. Mm -hmm. Hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> Bars. Yeah, so the, there's Mike Evans out there. Uh, you've got OBJ, Wash, Duns, Go Curtis Samuel, your boy. I do like Curtis, though. Cedric Wilson, Kendrick Bourne, DJ Shark, Paris Campbell, Nicole Hardman. Like, the options aren't great. You also have Calvin Ridley. He's not I can see Cal How I can old see is he Calvin now? Ridley. Calvin Ridley's 29. That could be a name I could see going to. Cincinnati. Yeah. If both of those guys leave, T. T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd's gotten a little. He's he had like a nice little peak there for a moment, but he's kind of come on the come down. He'll get bit. you one good game. Yeah. One really nice game. You're like, yeah. Dude, that guy two tutties, close to hundred. I mean, he was solid last year. He had what eight hundred yards receiving, sixty-seven catches. He just doesn't score touchdowns. He's no. just a solid yeah. slot guy. Yeah. yeah. Solid slot guy. Well. Speaking of T. Higgins, he'll be coming to Nashville, Tennessee next year. Okay. And joining Mr. Callahan. And so are you, you know, did you change your mind? Or are you gonna go? I'm going back. I'm going back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was gonna see if anybody wanted to snag him, but I'm gonna have no. it because we can't we we can't be much worse. <laughs> we can't be much worse. I think the Jacksonville Jaguars are gonna go down a little bit. Um Colts, I don't know. You know, good Gardner Minshew, they had a good year. We were bad. They got some good good wins, but I think I think the Titans make a rise up because we're going to be able to score points now. This is going to be nice. We're going to draft somebody that's going to be serviceable on the offensive line. We're going to get T. Higgins. 
And if we don't get anybody in the offensive line in the draft, we're going to get a Dunze. And we're going to have three stud wide receivers. We just got to throw real fast. That's the main part. And you got somebody who can do it. Yeah. We got a guy that's just going to be loading up really quick. And then I don't know if we're going to have Derek or Tajay. We might just be super fast and you can't block it? anybody. But do you believe in Will Levis? <sighs> got to have someone to throw to him. I, I mean, Levis showed me at least a couple times that there's potential there. I mean, he's not CJ, but who is? You know, Jordan and, Love. Bro, I'm not okay. I'm done with him. So, Jordan <laughs> oh, oh, Love is him. I don't know what you guys are talking about. He's not better than CJ Stroud. He's not. No. Are you sure? I'm positive. I think you're crazy, bro. CJ has done stuff that we have never seen from a rookie quarterback in Houston with nothing. Nothing. Yeah, Nico Nothing. Collins, Tank Dell. But Bro, had you ever been, like, have you Nico ever heard of them? Like, yes. yes. I've yeah. never heard of Tank Dell in yeah. my life. <laughs> Tank was not good until I heard. Got... I heard Tank Dell coming out of the, out of the draft. Yeah. Uh, still, I don't. Yeah, I've never he's, heard he's of him. Just drafted. He's a rookie. Yeah. yeah. I want to say is Jordan Love is expected to look the way he looked because he's no, had he so much wasn't. time. He's had so much time. He wasn't expected to look that good. I said it last time. I said I expected him to be good. I didn't expect him to be no, bad. I rock with you in love. I just don't think he is better at all than CJ Strauss. Okay, we'll see. But I do have to I do have to talk about that. What are you going to I was going to say shout out to the Titans. So I'm sorry. I mean, yeah, no, you're good. I just think they're going to be better cuz they can't get much worse. Um and that division is not great. I mean, Sure, CJ and them look good, but okay, let's get another year of film. The sophomore slump's a thing because these coaches are like, all right, we got to figure some stuff out. We're yeah. going to be able to score now. Legit. Same thing with, I mean, I don't know what Richardson's going to look like when he comes back after this injury. Maybe he's still going to be awesome because there was some potential there. You're like, this guy's a freak show. Yeah. And they can block. So who knows? I, I, I legit think the Titans are going to be back in that. Eight, nine, not an eight run again, but here we are. I can see it. But it's better than four wins. So they had six this past year. Oh, six. Yeah. They had six. Uh, but my biggest thing with the Titans, my biggest pushback would be there's just so many holes to fill. Even if you believe in Will Levis, the offensive line, the pass catchers, do you believe in Tajay Spears? Because it doesn't seem like Derrick Henry's coming back. And then you look at the defense. I know Big Jeff is there, which is great, but there's a lot of holes on the back end as well. Don't have a number one cornerback. Maybe yeah. Derrick Henry's not coming back. He's not coming back to the Titans. He's an unrestricted free agent. He ain't yeah. coming back. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah. He's probably going to be in Dallas. This year? This upcoming year? This yeah. year. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. He's gone. But it wasn't worth it last year anyways. No. Yeah. Mm. It was. I mean, like. To keep him wasn't worth it. No. No. And, we're and you know, this is going to be a different offense. And it just won't be worth it to revolve it around Derrick one more year. And that really shows. The O line, hopefully, is going to be vastly improved. Thanks, good to uh, thanks to Callahan's dad coming down with him. Mm -hmm. Yes, because that's going to be a huge help. We're going to have good coaching on that line. We got rid of this horrendous strength conditioning staff for the for the most part. Gosh, the most injured team besides the freaking Chargers every year. So finally, I think we're going to have some stability up front and very solid coaching and maybe we're able to bring some guys in now that we do have Papa Callahan. So we'll see. That's my main thing is I think there's potential and it was bad last year when it was bad. It was so bad, real bad. Yeah. And if you know, Hopkins, let's say you get T and if you want to draft somebody, this is a very deep wide receiver draft. It is. It is. Yep. So you get them in the first or the second, like if alt's gone by the time you come around, like get, Freaking Roma Dunze. Even if you don't have T yet, you got a Dunze. Maybe Burks can wind up being something. I don't know. And then you have Hopkins. And then you got some serviceable tight ends. I don't know what Okongo is going to be, but I think he can be something. He's good. No? He's good. We just got to learn how to use him now. Yeah. That's the big thing. Got to learn how to use these tools. Mm hmm. You absolutely do. Uh, I'm going to stick in the same division to round things out here. Before we move on, you mentioned them a little bit. I took the Colts was the last team on my list. Why so? I just think the upside of the potential of Anthony Richardson is so great. Yeah. 
I really like him as a as a quarterback, as a passer. He's incredibly raw, but you saw some flashes there when he got a chance to play last year. One hundred percent. So I like I like what he brings to the table, having a healthy him. And you mentioned it with Gardner Minshew. They still had what nine wins this past year. Yep. So that's a good roster. They have a good roster. They have good makeup. Like they have good playmakers. Whether Jonathan Taylor ends up staying there or not, and, you know, he got that little contract or whatever. You got to resign Michael Pittman Jr. That's a big thing. He's an unrestricted free agent this year. That dude's a stud. Mm-hmm. He is. You, your boy Josh Downs from yeah. UNC, dog flashes. Do you have to resign Michael Pittman though? Yes. Yes, I, you do. I, I, I Unless you're you're signing it. like a T Higgins or something along those lines. That's what I'm saying. Like if I get T Higgins, like I would take that every day. Uh, I think I like the Colts just make no you. movement. I just don't think they make any movement up or down. I think yeah. they're going to be right where they are. This uh, well, that's what I'm saying. Like then you're saying Gardner Minshew and Anthony Richardson are no different. Anthony Richardson like, to me has more upside than Gardner Minshew. But like you mentioned, what's the pieces around him? Like I mean, if you you have to pick back up a wide receiver if he you doesn't sign him. Yeah, you can sign him, but I'm you don't have a lot of unrestricted free agents. It's literally Michael Pittman Jr. You have uh, Julian Blackman as a safety, and then Kenny Moore. Kenny Moore is so good. Yeah, you resign those two guys, you're good. So good. You're good. Maybe you have some money. You bring in some other pieces or whatever it may be. You solidify the offensive line through the draft. They're just Zach Moss. They're not on my radar. So, but I'm glad you're teaching me about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're just not on my radar. Yeah, that's a team, especially with the young quarterback coming back. I like, I like the Colts to potentially take a take a leap. As you mentioned, I really like the Jags. I like Trevor Lawrence. I like the pieces that they have there in 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 Jacksonville with your boy Kyle Bosworth. But I don't. I mean, like their defense is so suspect. I like the pieces, but again, they just don't. They've not put it together. I know that's what I'm saying. That's why I I don't. I want to believe in that, but I hold. I don't wholeheartedly do it. So like. If the Titans can fill all of the, the, I think it's going to take the Titans two to three years to fill the voids that they have in order to be like a, a bona fide playoff contender. I think they can get there. I do like Callahan a lot as the head coach. Mm-hmm. The defense needs to kind of be retooled. The secondary, big time. I liked what Vrabel and and um, Shane Bowen were able to do defensively. They're a real scrappy bunch. For sure. But they just, have, they really have to just retool that entire organization. Like they're pressing the reset button top to bottom. From offense, defense, the top with Rand Carthon, and then the coaching staff as well. Like they're just such a re rebuild, reset type of team that I just don't know if it's gonna. I feel like it's gonna take them a couple of years to really get to where you want to be. I hate they got rid of Vic, uh, Vrabel. I'm sorry. Oh no, I agree. Uh, I definitely yeah, he agree. is a he's a beast. I like, think that was a great move. Really? Oh, yeah. dude, I just he think... wants so much control. He's like a control freak. You should let the head coach have control. No, no, you, you no, got... no. He wanted he he didn't trust Rand Carthon. Yeah, he wanted control thing. over like all of the coaches. He like hired his buddies and wouldn't fire anybody even if they weren't performing. He just didn't hold people accountable. Instead of getting the best person for a specific job, he got a person that was good, that was his friend, and then he just wouldn't fire them when they weren't performing. I see both of y'all's points, though, yeah. because like that is very telling because he wasn't rehired in any organization in this offseason. Awesome. However, I do think from an X and an X's and O's standpoint, he is amazing. Yeah, He's so smart. He is so smart. He's going to find He's going to find himself somewhere, obviously, but... I don't know. I just liked him. I just thought he was a really good coach. That was the thing, too, is when you look at him from a coaching perspective, he's hard to beat. But to G's point, the control aspect is a lot. It's too much For that sure. he wanted. And, you know, I sure, I guess they have way too much invested in Rand now to back away and go through the whole process. But uh, I just wish something could have worked out. I wish as well. All right, let's move on real quick because we only have a, a little bit of time left here on the on this episode. But let's get into just while we're on the NFL, I do want to talk about the EA Sports, the college football, and I, I think that'll be a fun topic as well. But I want to read and react to some of these trades that Pro Football Focus put out up on Instagram, and I want to get a, our thoughts on them. Okay. First one, Justin Fields traded to the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Steelers would get Justin Fields and in return, the Bears get a 2024 second round pick, number 52, and a 2025 fifth round pick. It's actually not a bad idea if they decide to keep their first round pick and pull a quarterback off of there. I mean, you just got to get a send them somewhere, and then you just want to reload around that guy. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm on board for that, and the Steelers, dude. I mean, 
who wouldn't want to play for the Steelers? Who doesn't want to play for Mike Tomlin? Yeah. Plus, now you have Art as your OC. Yeah. That's another one of my teams I thought about. But until Mike Tomlin doesn't go 10 wins, it's, it's like, I mean, I, I don't know. Nine or 10 wins is where they stick They're pretty at. consistent. Yeah. I don't know. I, I like that. I like that option for the Steelers, but... Can they really improve? I don't know. He he's maybe he maybe that was another thing for Tomlin was getting an OC and not having to worry so much about that now because clearly they had an issues. Oh yeah. Is he gonna move the needle more than Kenny Pickett, though? I don't know. I'm not a bit the biggest fan of this trade, to be honest. I'm not a big fan of Kenny Pickett, to be honest. He's bad. <laughs> is he yeah. bad or was it just I don't think he's very good. I think Justin is just in the Fix of Chicago. I mean, throw yeah. him anywhere else. I mean, yeah. he can have a Lamar type of effect. I mean, yeah. he can. I mean, he's built like a linebacker. He's a dynamic. Did you just compare him to Lamar Jackson? Yeah, I said like like no effect. I think that's a fair. Don't back down from him, GT. That's what I'm. I didn't it's back down fair, from him. It's a I fair said that and I said exactly. It's what a I'm fair comparison. We stand on business on this side. Yeah, y'all and white I, t-shirts. I'm standing there. on business, brother. Come on. <laughs> All right, Lamar, two-time MVP, Lamar Jackson. Yes, bro. From a rushing perspective. Oh, well, it's okay. So oh, you're talking about from a rushing perspective. Yeah. Barrett just said in general. From a rushing perspective, their, absolutely. Their games are very similar. But Justin Fields ain't Lamar. I think he could be. He ain't I mean, Lamar. He ain't Lamar. I think, I mean, you throw Lamar on any any team without all the pieces that you need, he's not going to succeed. Throw yeah. him on the Chicago Bears, I bet you he has a... Well, what did he have before they yeah. brought in some, you know, a couple of wide receivers? They built they didn't around have really him. anything. They yeah. built and around an MVP. They built around him. Yeah, now, but he won his first MVP. He wasn't built around. Yeah, he had Hollywood Brown as the number one receiver. <laughs> Trash money. Yeah, I, I get he, it. He's not had pieces. And I get you know. it, man. I'm just saying, you. He has all of the capabilities in the right place to. To really make a run and for for a team, GT, and, I'm with you, bro. Yeah, man, haters, dog. Man, haters. That's why we got the no, sunglasses this, on. This 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 size. We got the sunglasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got yeah, we got to be careful about these mics. It's hard to touch. <laughs> yeah, Dun- Duncan Avenue squad over here. Yeah, I just the Lamar like effect. I see where you're trying to go. Yeah, I see. I see what <laughs> you're but thinking, but yeah, no, it's come. Justin Fields, dog. You watch. We don't watch a whole lot of Chicago football, but when you do. You realize why nobody's going to keep him instead of Caleb Williams. That's what I'm going to say. Oh. I love you, Justin. And you are, he is fun to watch whenever he takes off. But he ain't going to win you a lot. He ain't going to do it. All right. How about uh, Khalil Mack to the Lions? Khalil Mack would go to the Lions, and in return, the Chargers get a 2025 fourth-round pick. Any help the Lions can get on that defense is a win. You pair him with Aiden Hutchinson? Yeah, I think, I think it's a W. How old's Khalil Mack now? He's getting up there in age. But he, that could be like a Dwight Freeney late in the career. Like, hey, let's let, yeah. let's go passing downs and let's get it. Yeah, I guess Von Miller, he went to the Rams, you know, old. One of, one of, he was mm-hmm. god-awful. He's 32. Is Thank you, Joseph. Uh, Khalil Mack is 32. Von yeah. Miller was god-awful last year. I know, but he still won a championship for uh, two two years ago with the with the Rams. With the Rams, yeah, so I'm saying, like, you then can he still... got paid with the Bills, and he has been trash. I mean, I can see where the pick makes sense when it comes to bringing some leadership on the defensive end into the locker room. But, but Do you def- think Cleo Mack brings that? I think I've he, never heard that about Cleo. Mack. I think I think any experience you can offer is and that defense in Los Angeles was awful as well. Yeah, last year I like Cleo Mack. I think he's a great player. I don't know if he's like a leader. I mean, we're talking about what a fourth round pick. Yeah, no, I'm not saying I wouldn't do it. I would do it for the Lions. Yeah, I'm with you guys. Like, I would do, absolutely do it. For sure. I'm not just looking for him to come in and be a leader. I think that's Aiden Hutchinson. He's more of like a hired gun of like, come on in and let, let's let's just get after the passer. Yeah. You'll see less double teams because everybody's going to be doubling for Aiden. Yeah. You want the rotation. That wasn't the thing you saw with the Eagles two years ago. Was that rotation was sick? Mm-hmm. Yes. Those they just yes. kept bringing in Fresh guys four, that can get four. there. And that's a that's just it's a part of the new f- formula. When you're gonna have to, you know, now you're gonna have to play Jordan Love. You know, you're gonna have to got you're gonna have to get after guys <laughs> in your that's division. That's talk to them. Um, Let them know. But now it's you know, how can we beat Patrick Mahomes? How can we do that? A lot of pass rushers and hope for the best. And mm-hmm. hope for the best. I mean, shoot, we talked about it, Chris Jones, the Chris Jones effect. Yeah. With the uh, with the Chiefs. Yeah. Absolute dog. Yeah. Dog. All right, last one we're going to talk about. Devontae Adams 
to the Jets. Pairing 12 and 17 back together. This time it would be 8 oh. eight and 17. What are they giving up? What are they giving up? The Jets would have to give up a 2025 second round pick. Slam dunk, no brainer. Let's go win a championship with Aaron Rodgers. I think if you're the Jets, you do it. Yeah. yeah. No question. To. Take yeah. a shot. Why not? Yeah. Take a shot. You get rounded a lot, though. It is a lot. I mean, you're going all in, all the chips in the table at that point. Yeah. For your two years with Aaron and Devontae. So we've seen wide receivers fall off cliffs pretty quick. Even somebody that's at his level. Yeah. I mean, as a Titans fan, you've seen it. You've got plenty of Buddy, recycled I, garbage yeah, that we'll, has come your way. And that, that is I will see Devontae Adams in three and a half years get traded to the Titans and be like, you know what? We've got a guy. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's gonna look just like Randy Moss, it's gonna look just like Julio Jones, Andre Johnson. Andre Johnson. Just keep yeah. going down. Yeah. That's what it's going to look like. So if there starts to be these Titans rumors, I'm like, all right, you guys got a good thing, New York. So, I don't know. I think Garrett Wilson would give up 1-7. He said if Devontae Adams were to come in. Whoa. Whoa. So would that would be big. I mean, yeah, I would do it. Do it to it. I'll Jets, it. get Devontae, pair him, and Aaron Rodgers. It would be 8-17, and 17, which is a little weird. I know he was 8 in college, but... 12 to 17 is always what it's going to be. All right. Last thing that we're going to get into today is uh, I want to talk a little college football with you and uh, not, you know, X's and O's college football, but you may have heard this past week, last week, there was a big drop that, you know, we've may have heard the rumors. I know a lot of you here in the South are very in tune with the EA sports college football, the NCAA college football game. Everybody has wanted it and clamored for many years for it to come back only for it to just be dangled in front of us and teased and, you know, yeah, maybe it'll come back. Oh, I hear some rumors about, you know, maybe it will, maybe it won't. The trailer dropped. The rumors are true. The NCAA EA Sports College Football Video Game is back in business. Yes. We're all very thankful. Joseph is raising his arms in triumphant fashion. Yeah, we're all very excited for that. And uh, I think the next question now, fellas, has to be who dons the cover? Who should don the cover? And I want to start with Garrett because you had a, a very interesting idea. Yeah, I mean, I think my a yes, I am so happy. I'm waiting a decade for this. I loved that video game. The best. Up. It was the best. my favorite. I used to create me, and I was a baller on the Cincinnati Bearcats. I don't know okay. why. I what, uh, what, what position? <laughs> oh, running back, man. We're running back. The running back. Yeah. I, w I was like seven ten, you know, two eighty. <laughs> On the, foot on the Just on the all black, I had all black Cincinnati Bearcats. It's a bad color. The black and the red is a good look. I was I was thinking I was baller, but no, dude. If you're gonna put anyone on the cover, you got to do Saban. I mean, you're talking about a decade we've been waiting on this and this this video game. Who has been more dominant in this sport the last decade? Alabama Crimson Tide. You got to put Nick Saban. Kirby Smart. On the cover, I think you get a picture of him at different, you know, holding up trophies in different places, you know, that he 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 had it at, and then that's that's who I would say you throw it up there. That's don't a good one. Don't don't throw like Caleb Williams on there or anything that's like recent. Like he's not even going to be make an homage year. to this. Like who just rocked the last decade, and that's what I would do. It makes too much sense to put Nick Saban on the cover. It's perfect. Yeah, it absolutely does. Because I I, I, I I mean, you guys know college football, but you, at least you two, I don't know how much you're into college football, Garrett, but like, what player would you want to put on for this upcoming year? Who would you put on? Well, if you go by the usual. If Joseph, you want to chime in from the, uh, the couch, you can, who would you put on the cover? You know college football really well. Who would I put on the cover? Yeah, who would you want to put I, on the I cover? Put a I, I, he wouldn't put a single person. So you'd have a, in my opinion. So we need to get this man a mic. Yeah. It'd be like a V-shape. You'd have Saban in the middle holding up a trophy. A V-shape with Saban in the middle holding up a trophy. Yeah, and then behind him, you have iconic moments from the sport. So and then behind him, like iconic moments from the sport. The sport. Picture, like Kirby holding his. Kirby uh, holding his. Uh, Dabo holding of, uh, his. Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson. Jamar Chase, so Justin Jefferson. The Maybe a little Joe Burrow back there. Yeah, because, yeah. you got to get the boat. You got to get the Burrow. From the playoff. Okay. Because that kind of. Yeah. That's kind of when we lost it. Yeah, like Michigan winning the yeah, throwing, for the first throwing, time in a long time. Yeah. You recap an era that was lost. Mm, an era that was lost. I, I love I that love idea that. as well. That, I think Joseph. that cut ties your idea 
and a grander scheme idea altogether. Yeah, I think it. I think that actually is better than my idea. I think it. <laughs> be honest, I think that that's, that's got it all. He's put a lot of thought into that. One. Yeah, yeah. Joseph's been he's set up on that. He's one. been waiting a decade, yeah. Yeah. one whole decade. He's like, I've got a brilliant marketing plan. Should have pitched it. You pitch it to EA. Yeah, well, they do that, and then the opening sequence is literally just because of those moments. Yeah. Like, then it's like press A to start and boom, you're in. Oh, I love yeah, that. He's, he's got it on lock, you know. I've been thinking about it. He's been thinking yeah. about it a lot. A I do lot, love that. A lot. So I used to play this game every single day in college for money. 100%. Me and my roommate. Shout out to Jody Kennis. I'm actually flying to Houston when this game drops just so we can play it together. We uh, said we would not play it okay. without one another because we played it together Sorry. every single day. He got the Oregon Ducks and I always got Clemson. And he used to just wear me out with that triple option. And I couldn't stop it. Still can't to this day. Nothing. So, love the game. It's the, it, it is, I feel like a piece of me is returning. Like, if you polled all Madden players, half of us didn't play Madden. We just miss NCAA so much. Can I be honest with you, boys? Yeah. I have not played a single snap of NCAA college. Oh, oh my God. Video game. My, did y'all hear my heart just, like, break a little? What were you doing? Playing Madden. We, I was from up the uh, up north. I was from Connecticut. Wow. We didn't. I didn't follow college football when I was growing up, so I had no. I had wanted nothing to. I had no desire to play any college football game because I didn't know any of the players, the teams, or whatever. I, it just wasn't our thing up north. Bro, road to glory, man. Oh, no, winning a Heisman. Yes. Getting that in all day, what every day. day. What a day that oh, would be! Man, just that... to finally, you're you know, especially if you're the coaching aspect, you know, you're you're leaving Toledo. And you're going somewhere big like Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, those drops in your day, you're like, I've done nothing this summer except for play six seasons <laughs> of NCAA. <laughs> and it has been a wonderful summer. And, you know, you you just do all the good things. And, you know, I, I won multiple national championships with Tennessee. It's a big deal here. Yeah. Ball for life. Ball for life, baby. Yeah, Phil. Yeah. Only could do it in real life. But I'm excited to see all like, the, the different, like, things they add to it. There's so many stadiums that have been, like, you know, added on or changed or mm -hmm. like in the case of Baylor they had a whole brand new stadium I'm excited to see what that looks like I mean there's just so it's many look like the real thing it's I mean I know but it's just it's cool to see you it on a go screen there and, and you it. can go play in it I just I don't know as a kid it was just so good you got to be what you wanted to be when you grew up and that's how I envisioned this so I mean I'm I'm just stoked for it well here's five hundred dollars and I'm gonna have to go spin on buying a new Game console. Game console and game and yeah, I guess buy Xbox Live again. I don't know. I'll see you on PlayStation 5, brother. Oh, you PlayStation game? Yeah. I'm on, I'm I'm on Xbox. I'm on Xbox though. Are they cross platforms, cross stream? I'm sure this is gonna be cross. This will be cross platform. Yeah. It's too good to not be. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw you a beat. <laughs> well, if you get it, maybe I'll play it. <laughs> oh my god, yes. I mean, we would have to play this. I mean, we would yeah, need to do I'm this. I'm looking at you, Shades. <laughs> bro, Joseph, you must be talking to me. You're not, brother. You just talked about how you could not beat the Oregon Ducks. So Listen, all you have to do is do use that triple option. Jody, and Jody, Jody Kinnis and I hate, please don't get a sound out of this. It, that, that boy was a rare breed. Everybody else could got the work. Okay. But he just, he knew how I played. I, I'm saying four verticals. Somebody's open. Who's the highest rated player in the game next, uh, when this drops? Mm. Who's the highest rated player? Is it Nico? No. 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 Is it? Honestly, my answer is cliche. I think he's going to be up there. Bro, Carson Beck is really good. Carson Beck. George's quarterback is elite. Gross. He's a problem. He's an issue. Joseph is happy about that. He's he, a dog. I, I'm just honest. <laughs> Carson George Beck is a problem. All right, last thing I want to bring up. Before we, do you have an answer to that question? No, you're still I, thinking I'm really it. curious what you think, though. I was trying to think back. Is it really going to be Quinn Ewers? Yeah, like or well, I guess that the Oklahoma State kind of running back, but Shadur Sanders has a chance. No, Shadur Sanders. Oh, uh, Sanders. Uh, it is actually might be Shadur. No. Answer. No, 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 no. It's Travis Hunter. Travis Hunter. Travis, Travis Hunter. Hunter. Oh. oh. Travis yes. Hunter, no doubt about it. Yeah. I was, yes. I'm trying to go through the Heisman list. I was like, we're missing somebody. Travis Hunter is a beast. Yeah. Offense, defense. <laughs> Boy's cold. He'll be a 95. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, shoot. Yeah, exactly. So, should here's the last thing I want to bring up. It, should they change the NCAA video game to be named something like the NFL one is in Madden? 
Should it be, is there a, should it be called Saban? Should they change the name? I wouldn't play it. <laughs> I wouldn't play it. Brother, that game's getting played. If it's called yeah. anything in the world, <laughs> I got to have it. I have to. I mean, I think what, yeah, because when Madden dropped, Matt, John Madden was just a, he was just a, an annou- a, a sports commentator at that point, right? I mean, he wasn't still coaching. I mean, he was 20 years removed from coaching at that yeah, point. Yeah, but he was such a legendary coach. That's why I was there. Yeah. But that's why they named it Madden because he didn't really have a specific affiliation with the team. And that was my point. I know we were talking about this pre-show. And my, my point was, if you're going to call it something, I don't think you can call it Saban, even though he's the most iconic college football coach that we've seen next to like a Bear Bryant or something along those lines. But sure. well, Madden he's associated on it. Madden was a commentator. Exactly. On it. And that's what I'm saying. That's the reason why you don't call it Saban because John Madden was... Madden, the broadcaster, yeah. and he was always breaking down film and he was talking about different players and games like John Madden for the era that played the John Madden video game knows him mostly as a broadcaster, a famous broadcaster. And so that's why his voice was on the game. And that's why it's called John Madden football. Yeah. So you're not going to call it Saban or something like that. My, like I, my only rebuttal to that or like alternate. What about Corso? For Lee Corso. Oh, yeah. That's uh, not but he doesn't call games, though. Well, See, to me, he's not a broadcaster. <laughs> Corso's technically not a broadcaster. He's not a broadcaster. So I, lo- I, I love Herbie. I think he's one of the best of all time. Yeah. yeah. Easily. One of my faves. He's fantastic. McAfee? <laughs> and Boy, my boy's made it. <laughs> for okay, well, McAfee. Um, <laughs> Let me get that McAfee 25, man. <laughs> yeah. I got a McAfee 26. If he does that... He's turned into like Wild. the sports king. Yeah. Wild. Und- undefeated. Yeah. Absolutely wild. Okay. Well, with that being said, we'll stop at Pat McAfee. It's been another edition to Chat It Up. Hope you have all y'all have a great week. Follow us all over social media at Chat It Up Sports, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all that good stuff on YouTube as well. You can watch us up there. You can listen to us wherever you get your podcasts. For Joseph Guthrie pushing the buttons. We appreciate Joseph. Always doing a fantastic job back there behind uh, the scenes. We will get him a mic. I promise you at some point you'll hear his silky smooth voice. From Malcolm Harris, Garrett Tolley, Chase Green. I'm Greg Larnard. Until Thursday at around 7 o'clock, 7 to 8 o'clock, we'll be live up on YouTube, Facebook, all over the place. We'll bring you another edition of Chatted Up. Stay safe. Peace and love. We'll catch you next Thursday. On Thursday.